It, it's, a, it's that sorrow because human beings grieve, it, it, and yet we don't have this, this hopelessness because we know that we're going to see them again. And Jesus promised that. He says, I will receive you unto myself. That, and then he goes on to say, where I am, you know, and the way you know. I've been teaching you this path and the way to heaven for three and a half years. You know the way. But now here's Thomas. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going and how can we know the way? Wait a minute. A moment ago you were saying to us that where you're going, we cannot come. Now you're saying you're going to receive us to be where you are. Can you clue us in on this, please? Where are you going? Can you clarify it? You know, that reminds me that teaching does not equal learning. Just because something is told to me doesn't mean I learned it. I may be able to repeat it. I may be able to speak it back to that person like a parrot. But it doesn't mean that I've learned it because learning is a relative permanent change of behavior through the acquisition of information that transforms a person's life. When you learn something, your behavior changes. When you're learning something, things go on inside of you. So you can, you can theorize, you can, you can quote something that you heard, or you can live it out. Me, I live in hope. I'm expecting to see the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I'm wanting to learn from him. And so when he says that to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going and how can we know the way? Notice Jesus' response. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I'm not a source to these things. I am these things. I'm not just a pathway. I am these things. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the way to God. I am the truth that reveals lies. I am the eternal resurrection life. And this is all wrapped up in me. And if you have a relationship with me, you have those things. And no one will come to the Father except through me. I'm the ex exclusive way to God. That's what we read in Acts 4.12. Nor is there salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. He's saying, I am the exclusive way to God. The only way to get to God is through me. And so that's why we come to God through Him. The Holy Spirit convicted you of your sin and righteousness and judgment. You became aware of the fact that you're not a Christian. And it takes the Holy Spirit to do that because I'm telling you, the majority of Americans believe themselves to be faithful, believe themselves to be Christians. Majority of Americans have a very high opinion of ourselves. We as a nation have had a very high opinion of ourselves for a long time. And we think we're pretty good. And in many ways, this nation has been a great nation. And I love the United States. Fact is, it's not a Christian nation. It does have a lot of Christians, though, and I thank God for that. But not everybody automatically is a Christian. You become a Christian when you receive Christ. When you believe in Him, when you trust Him, when you give your heart to Him, when you ask Him to forgive you of your sins, to cleanse you, it doesn't come through religious ritual. It comes through a faith in Christ. It comes through opening your heart and saying, God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. I, I need your forgiveness. I need you now. And that's what Jesus taught. Do you want to hope for heaven? You open your heart for Christ. And he comes into your life. And then you enter into heaven, that place that has been prepared for you. And he promised, I will come and receive you unto myself, that where I am, where are you, Jesus? I'm at the right hand of the Father. Where I am, you will be there also. Our Father, we ask that you would work in us today. And I lift up this congregation, especially those who are not sure where they stand with you even right now, Father. And I pray that you might work in each heart. Our eyes are closed, our heads are bowed, and perhaps I have somebody right now in this room, more than one, who has a need to get right with the Lord right here and right now. And if you do, I want to pray for you. Would you raise your hand and let me pray for you right now? Just raise your hand so I can see you, please. Lord, you see these hands of these who are raising their hand to you, saying, God, I need you to come into my life right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would reach down and you would touch these lives. Their hands are raised to you. Reach down and touch them, I pray. And may they open themselves completely to you. Saturate them. Fill them with your spirit, Lord. And from this day on, may they pursue you. May they hunger for you. May they know you, Lord. Wash them and cleanse them. Fill them with your presence. 
and may everything pale in comparison to you. And we thank you, Lord. We receive you now. We thank you, Lord. Bless you. Thank you, Lord. You can put your hands down. And Jesus, continue working in all of us and move in us, I pray, to your glory, in your name. Amen. Let's all stand. As you're standing, one last thing, and then we'll close with a song. I mentioned on Wednesday that I had been given an invitation to go to the Saddleback thing that took place yesterday that all of you are familiar with, with Barack Obama and, and Senator McCain. And I had told the Wednesday night Bible study that I had been, you know, given a free ticket and asked if I wanted to go. And I had told you guys on Wednesday who were there that I wasn't going to go. I went. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's nothing to clap about. But I did go. And, uh, you know, to get in onto the grounds, you had to have passes. You had to go through an FBI clearance. They had to check you and FBI clearance and the whole nine yards. When you get there, they had people on the roof. It's like if you, when you go to Washington, D.C., in, in the Capitol building there, there are snipers on the roof all, all around that area. Well, when you got to Rick Warren's church, there were police officers on the roof. There were helicopters that were flying over us. And uh, you had to go through all of these things to get in to hear these two guys talk to you about their desire to be president of the United States. It was interesting. I have to be honest with you. It was interesting. But I thank God I don't have to go through all of that to pray and to have an audience with my Father in heaven. What a privilege we have, guys, to just take our needs directly to him. Just to say, Father, Daddy, you know, I have access to you. And I didn't have to go through FBI clearance. I just went through your son. You know, my kids in this church, you know, my kids will come walking into my office. They don't make an appointment. They don't. They should. But they don't. <laughs> they just come and walk in whenever they want to. And Josiah, my grandson, he's in there as long as he wants to be. Sophie, all she needs to do is make a noise, and Papa's there. And you know, Lord, He's always taught me lessons through my kids. And and if my kids have access to me at any time, and they never interrupt me because I will make time for them, how much more so do I thank my God in heaven, who's running an entire universe, but He's always got a moment for us. I just love Him for that. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your accessibility to us. We thank you because we can come to you through Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, as we're about to leave, I ask that you would walk with us and work in us. We leave this place into the mission field. I ask that you would work in us as we serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.